Hello. And uh, he wrote it in a Who Wants to Be a Millionaire format. I'm not sure that we need to spend time doing it on how, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Um, uh, basically, he has a series of rules. Uh, you get seven questions and da-da-da. You know how to play Who Wants a Millionaire, right? You've watched the game show a time or two in your life. Uh, money, you know, et cetera. You want to do it that way? I don't care. But we don't want to take too much time because our point is just to learn. Here's round one, all right? So you can answer it. Here you go. What do you think? Which of the following represents a pair of isotopes? This, this is actual questions from the 1984 um, released exam, which is an old one. But they were allowed to have calculators in 84 in multiple choice, so some of these questions may be a bit unfair. Uh, we'll assume you don't get a calculator. Sorry. So... You think D. Everyone's going with D. Why? All right. Atomic number is 7. Um, the uh, mass number is 13. And the second one, atomic number is 7. The mass number is 14. So D is what you're going with? Yes. All right. Let's see if you're right. Doom. You are. Okay. All right. You guys all have 250 bucks. Okay. All right. How would you prepare two liters of a 0 0.05 molar solution of potassium iodide, KiO3? Now, this test question would have, uh, I wouldn't be able to do this with a calculator. Um, the test question uh, would be written a little differently today due to the fact without a calculator. But if we understand the concept, we could kind of figure that out. But let's set it up stoichiometrically. See if you can set it up, so you get a blank sheet of paper out or something. Set it up stoichiometrically. If you have malaria in the volume, you can do what? This is your volume, and this is your molarity, right? So without my calculator, I can do this in my head. 2 times 0 0.05. 5% of 2 is, uh, is that 0 0.1? 10%, yes, it's 0 0.1. 0 0.1 what? Millimoles. Watch that. Oh, 0.1 moles. Thank you. It's in liters. You are correct. 0.1 moles. So what do you do? We don't need a calculator. We can do this in our head. All right. They gave me my molar mass is 214. So I multiply by 1 mole is equal to 214 grams. So that's going to be 21.4, because it's, you know, decimal deal, 10%, uh, grams of KiO3. And what are you going to do with that? You're going to add how much water? Two liters of water. Actually, until there's a volume of two, so what answer are we going to go with? C. And he has actually a different slide, and C, of course, is answer. Until there is a volume of two liters. Right, the $1,000 question, I think, is the next one. Yeah. All right, here's a balanced equation. If 0.1 moles of silver reacts with 10 milliliters of 6 molar nitric, how much NO is produced? So this is 0.1 moles. This is 6 molar, and it's 10 milliliters. What kind of a problem do you have here? Yeah, it's a limiting reactant stoichiometric problem, right? So I'm asking how much uh, moles because that's the answers. How many moles of NO? If I've got 0.1 moles of silver, how many moles of NO do I have? 0.1 moles of silver over 1. What are you going to do here? One mole of NO over 3 moles of AG. All right, so that's going to be 1 over 3. I can do that in my head. That's 0.33 moles of NO. Now, it just says 0.1 moles, so significant figure-wise, it would be 0.3 moles, right? So that's the answer to C, correct? That may not be the answer, though. So what are you going to do with this? M times V is moles, right? So if I take M times V, 6 times 10 is 60. That's in millimoles, though, right? And that's of HNO3. I multiply that by a fraction. That'll be 1 mole of NO, sod over given, right? 1 mole of NO versus 4 moles of HNO3. So 60 divided by 4, 4 goes into 60, 1, and there's a 2 on each, 15 times, duh, 15 millimoles. Okay, or if you divide by thousands, that's 0 0.015 millimoles, right? 
So it's A. I don't see. It looks like they got B highlighted here, but I'm going to go with A as the uh, as the uh, survey should say A. Hopefully, yeah. That's right. Good. You see why that is? I haven't had to use a calculator yet. They might get easier numbers than that. I think. Um, all right, this one's easy. Which describes silicon dioxide? This is where you've got memorized Mr. Bergman's chart. Right, you've got compounds. Right, you've got the uh, uh, what do you call it? You've got uh, uh, compounds. You've got ionic, covalent, metallic. Covalent gets divided into three categories: polar, nonpolar, and network. Now, first of all, how do we know Si and O? What's the first thing you want to know about these? What kind of a compound is Si? Metal or nonmetal? It's a nonmetal. And oxygen is a nonmetal. So where are we going to go? It's down the covalent area. Got it? So what have we just eliminated? Ionic and metallic. All right? Now, worst case, guys, you've got a 50 50 chance. You need to guess on this one, don't you? All right, so what's the answer? We got it figured out? A is correct, because the net who makes network solids? Only carbon and silicon. This is silicon. Okay. Yeah, something you have to know that. Okay? All right, number uh, whatever, next one. $10,000 question. Which is used to make fertilizer? This is what they call the descriptive chemistry, where they just have sort of interesting sort of factoids about chemicals. This is hard to teach, because there's a zillion factoids about chemicals chemicals I could teach you and you never know what they're going to be on. You got to know which chemical is kind of a fertilizer. Anybody know? Yeah. Ammonia. It's got nitrogen. It's in H3. This is the stuff that makes Oklahoma City bombs actually. So, yeah. So, yeah. All right. Level three or fifty thousand. No. Vapor pressure of toluene is twenty-two millimeters of mercury. Vapor pressure of benzene is seventy-five millimeters of mercury. What is the mole fraction of the benzene in the vapor? They're not going to ask that question. We're skipping that one. They took that out of the AP test, so let's not worry about it. Okay. Hundred thousand. Two flexible containers are held at the same temperature and pressure. One has 0.5 gram H2 and the other has eight grams O2, which is false. Okay, so we got two containers. They are the same size. Is that right? They're flexible, no. They're like a balloon. This one has 0.5 grams of H2 in it, and this one has, it's a balloon, I should have drawn circles, 8 grams of oxygen. Okay, both containers have the same volume. They're at the same temperature and pressure. What, for them to have the same volume, what must be true? Same number of what? Of moles. So we don't know, we know grams, not moles. So this is, how many moles do we have here? 0.5 grams divided by, you know, times one mole over two grams. You've got to know hydrogen is H2. She said that, okay. So 0.5 divided by two, I can do that in my head. Half divided by one is a half. Divided by two is a quarter. So that's 0.25 moles, right? For the oxygen, you have eight grams over one, and there is, what, 32 grams in one mole because it's O2, right? So eight divided by, this is also a half a mole, isn't it? a quarter. I mean, a quarter of a mole. I didn't say that. Right. 0.25 moles. Half would be 16 over 32, so a quarter. So A is correct. Check. Both have the same average speed. True or false? What do they have? If they're at the same temperature and pressure, the 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere, or whatever it is, what would be the same? Their energy is the same, right? I just said this a minute ago. What's going to be set different? Their speed. Hydrogen is small. Oxygen is big. He's moving fast. Oxygen is moving slow. So this is the answer. I haven't looked at C and D, but we might as well. Both have the same number of molecules? Yeah, they do. Okay, the hydrogen container has a lower density. Now, what's the density again? Mass over volume. Okay. They do have the same volume, so in hydrogen weighs 2 grams per mole and oxygen weighs 16 grams per mole, or uh, 32 grams per mole, therefore, yeah, definitely, this is true. So B is the answer, right?
Little guys go fast, big guys go slow, if they're at the same temperature and pressure. Oops. So we just won ourselves $100,000, right? How cool is that? I think what he did, the, the other teacher, is he had brought it up and then kind of put him on the spot. I don't know. Which has amphoteric properties? Well, what does that mean? Ah, very good. You got to know what amphoteric means. If you don't know, you're hosed, right? It can either be an acid or a base. So some chemicals can be acids or bases, depending upon their solution. Now, what do you think? Hydrofluoric acid. Do you think it could be an acid or base? It probably is just an acid, right? All right. How about ammonia? What do you know about ammonia? It's a weak base, right? Nah, it's probably out. So it's down to these two. This one's a tricky one. It's actually C. Because aluminum hydroxide can react with water to make Al. The H would react with the OH. And it's going to make Al OH 4 minus plus H positive, and then it can also act as a base because it's got the OH in it. That's a tricky one. This is, aluminum makes a weird deal. Remember we, when we're making uh, complex ions that you, you double the charge? Remember that whole rule? Aluminum's the one exception. The actual one that makes the most sense is this one right here. Hold that thought. I have something playing in my ear. Very odd. All right. Okay. That one's a tricky one. Carbon dioxide reacts with water just to make carbonic acid. All right. All right. The million-dollar question. All right. Which solution has the highest boiling point? I think this is an easier question than the last one. They all have the same molarity with the exception of the, of the sugar. What do you guys think? Going D? Not D, why? What's the, what's the equation that's impo important here? Delta T B equals I K B times the molality. We have molarities here. I, I bet this should have been a uh, small m. Survey says it's A. Because this I equals 3 here, right? So it's, it's really 3 times 0 0.1, which is 0 0.3. This one down here was just 0 0.2, right? And the other two, I think, were 0 0.2 and 0 0.1, or I don't forget what they were. Okay, good. All right, round two. All right, how about we do it this way? Let's see who can keep getting them right. All right, so put down your answer, make a decision, and we'll see who can get as far. All right. So let's do this kind of for a little more fun here. Balance, what's the coefficient in front of the hydrogen? Okay, six, eight, nine, or ten. I'll talk you through it. All right, everybody got a decision yet? Huh? Got to at least make a guess on this one. I'll just put it up. Okay. I think that's been about a minute. This next one I'll do a real official clockwise. All right. What's the answer? G. Answer is D. Who's still in the game, or who who we lose? We lost one. Okay. All right. You keep answering it, but let's just see who can get as far as possible. Here's the next question. I'll leave it up here, and I will start my timer right now. You have one minute. One minute. Which? Remember, they're bad. Base acceptor acid donor. Oh, there's your minute. All right. What'd you choose? Answer is C. All right, did we lose anybody? We're all in the game still. All right, who are in the from our last one? All right, question number thousand dollar question. Ready, starting now. I'll give you some time to look at it. Why does HF have such a high boiling point compared to HCl, HBr, and HI? Ooh, you can also choose to bow out, I guess. Like the phone of friends. <laughs> 
from here? What do you think the answer is? D is correct, of course. That's the thing, remember? H plus F O R N E T phone home. That's how you know who does hydrogen bonding. All right. Let's take a look at our question. What is the next question? Is five thousand dollars or something? What is it? Five thousand. All right. Ooh, descriptive chemistry. Which one basically is not colorless? Which one's got colorful? Which is a colorful guy? You gotta have memorized these. You have a guess. Got to make it to like the $32,000 question. Then you get to keep your money. Isn't that the way it works or something like that? If you get to a certain level, you like it's kind of like that fifth grader question, right? Or that new show on who wants to be a fifth grader or who wants to be, who wants to, uh, be smarter than a fifth grader. That show where they pick the st dumbest people in America and put them on the TV and watch how stupid they are. And, yeah, I know all the answers to those questions. Actually, there was a couple like a ubiquitous history questions where I would be. All right, anyways, fun facts you don't tell. The survey says, who's still in the game? B is correct. It is dichromate, yes. What color is dichromate, by the way? Orange is correct. Okay, question, uh, what is it, $10,000 or whatever the next, yeah, ten. Okay, 20 mils of point. You only have a minute. Ooh, right out of reaction. Got it right out of reaction here. Steven, you got to write it all out. Come on. You got 40 seconds to make a choice. Let me work it out for you. Now, I'll, I'll, I would say K2, CO3, plus BA, CO3. And I've got uh, 20 times 0 0.2. That would be uh, the two, four millimoles of this. Barium carbonate, I've got uh, 12 millimoles, right? Yeah, 12. And when you balance this, I don't have to balance that. Wait a second. Oh, that's the precipitate. BaNO3, 2, and it makes barium carbonate plus potassium nitrate. To balance, I need a 2 here, and I think that's all. So it's a 1 to 1 ratio, so this will be minus 4, 0, minus 4. There will be 8 millimoles. You'll take 8, then divide it by the total volume, which is 50. So 8 over 50, which would be... Uh, 0.16, is that what comes out to be? At this point, we're going to need a calculator. Uh, that'd be 4 over 25. That'd be uh, almost like 10% uh, would be point uh, would be 2. So it'd be, it'd be like uh, be point 0.1, pardon me. I'm doing this in my head. I think it's point 0.2, isn't it? 4 fifths. I don't know. I need a calculator. You have to have a calculator on this one. I think it's going to be me. Is it one six? Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to do that in my head. You'd have a calculator for that one. All right. That one's a little cheesy because you don't have to count that one because you didn't have a calculator. How about that? All right. But that, you see the process. Anyways, they'll give you numbers that are easier. All right. Ready for our next question. $50,000 question. Chlorine water added to a clear unknown solution turns brown. When mixed with a solvent methylene dichloride, the organic layer turns violet. The unknown solution was probably... This is a descriptive question. You have to know some colors. Are there any chemicals up there that you have seen that are brown? Or kind of brown? Actually, the chemical itself isn't brown, but it turns into something that's brown. Yes, we've seen this. Small scale lab. What is it? Huh? Survey says it's iodide. That's right, because the iodide can turn into iodine, and that's brown. And then it says um, it can turn violet. What's violet? Surely we've seen this. Have we not seen this? 
when this turns violet, actually I2 in its solid form is purple or violet. I think we've got some iodine crystals in the back. All right. The $100,000 question. All right, well, still keep doing it, you know. Um, this is a stoichiometry. 70 mils of 3 molar sodium carbonate out of 30 mils of uh, sodium bicarbonate. Okay. You've got sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. It's not a reaction. It's a mixture, right? This would be 70 times 3. 7 times 3 is uh, uh, 210. But we'll have to do, what do you do with this here? A little tricky. You have to double it because you get Na2. So there'd be 420. And then the sodium carbonate is 30 times 1, which is 30. So it'll be 450 millimoles divided by 100 milliliters. So it'll be uh, four and a half, right? Yeah. All right, and for five hundred thousand dollars, all right, this is good. With, uh, KMT question: When the actual gas volume is greater than what's predicted by the ideal gas law. When the actual gas volume is greater, this is because the law does not have a factor for molecular, oh my, yeah. What guess would you make though? Remember the key thing about actual, about uh, about these, probably this is one you should most likely skip. But actually, no, I wouldn't skip it. I would, attraction is the thing that we've been talking about. Whenever we talk about it, it could also be volume, by the way. Yeah, it's volume. Because there's actually, there's two things. Remember, ideal gases have two things going for them. They have no attraction for themselves, and they take up no space, or no volume. So those would be your two choices. Huh? Because I think if it's less than, then it's attraction. Because if it's greater, um, the, uh, I'd have to sit and think about that one. I would have guessed on it. And the, the, I would have probably guessed attraction. Just didn't think about it. There's that Van der Waal equation. And the million-dollar question, when a pipette, a student took five 25-mil samples of the HCl, diluted them, and then added a few drops of phenethylene. They were titrated with sodium hydroxide and the point. The results? Then we must have a second part to this question. What caused the variation in the results? So let's look at our results here. 35.2. 35.1, 36, 36, 36. Okay, notice what's the big difference here? Where do you see a big difference? No, it's the, there's a big gap after sample one, and these are all quite precise, and this is the one that's the weird result. Okay, why? All right, the burette was not rinsed within AOH. The student misread five or six. Six on the burette, the different amount of water was added to the first sample. The pipette was not rinsed with HCl. Hmm? Yeah, it's A, because guess what happened? Is it was dilute, wasn't it? Well, it could be D, though. Oh, because guess what? I just thought of that. Because um, um, the number was wrong. It was, it was low. So it took, um, it took less NaOH. So if you think about it, in his in his burette or in his pardon me, in his flask he had his HCl. His first sample of HCl was of a low concentration. Right? If this number is high, it's the it's the other answer. So I'm gonna have to. I I just missed the million dollar question. I caught it just as I was thinking about it. I said, oh, it could be. Um, but I never said final answer, so I'm probably good, right? Actually, I don't know. But I looked at the answer there, I guess. Okay. All right, we can go back to easy questions. All right, back in the game now, right? Okay. A gas in a rigid container is heated until its absolute temp temperature is doubled. What else has doubled? Okay. All right. All right, be thinking about it. By the way, on the AP exam, there are always five questions. I got this PowerPoint from somebody else, so I'm a little bit concerned that these are actual AP questions. He, these may not be actual AP questions. They're certainly of the light right level, but they're always E questions. Or responses A B C D E. I've never. There's not just four choices. There are five choices. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah, we're. It will be. 
I'll, I'll format it during lunch and post it. A gas in a rigid container is heated until its absolute temperature is doubled. What else is also doubled? All right, what do you, what can you throw out? C. You can throw out C because the number of molecules per cubic centimeters, uh, you change, the volume is rigid. It's not going to change. They're going to move faster, right? I think we understand that. We understand that they're going to move faster, but we don't know. Does the potential energy of the molecules double? Hmm. What's uh, potential energy? Uh, of course, it's what? It's A. Because uh, the velocity doesn't change because, remember, that's the square root of the molar mass, right? Graham's law. This one is double. This is uh, Charles's law. Volume over, or uh, pardon me, pressure, uh, uh, gave the stack's law. Pressure over temperature is pressure over temperature. So if the pressure is 1 and the temperature is, say, 100 uh, degrees Kelvin, and you double it to 200, then this, by definition, has to be 2. It's, it, it's a function of Miss Graham's law, not Graham's law, um, the gay lussac law. All right, the $500 question or whatever it is. How many moles of oxygen will produce 14.2 grams of P4O10 from P? How many moles? Notice 14.2 and 284, at least they picked some nice numbers. That's like a function of that. You know, it's a factor of that, pretty easy factor. What's the reaction? P plus O2 makes P4O10. Is that balanced? Uh, no. <laughs> you need a 5 here and then a 4 here, right? So what do I know? I got 14.2 grams of P4O10. And I'm trying to find what? Moles of oxygen. So how many moles of this do I have? I divide this by 284, right? Grams per mole. So what is 14 over 284? 14.2 is half of 28.4, right? So this will be a 0 0.05 maybe, or point? It's not 0 0.5. It'd be 142. So it'd be a 0 0.05 moles, right? And then what are you going to multiply by? No, by five over one. Right? Five moles of O2 to one mole of P4O10. And so uh, 0 0.05 times 5 would be 0 0.025 or something like that, or 0.25. So I think it's D, because 5 times 5 is 25. So, Stephen, you're getting a multiple choice. That, yeah, that's good. It did. Um, which kind of a solid is ethyl alcohol? All right. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen are all an oxygen. What are the what kind of uh, elements you got here? Metals, non-metals. They're all non-metals, right? So what do we know by definition? This is going to be some kind of a covalent compound. Is it a network solid? Does it contain just carbon and silicon? Now there's carbon there, but it's going to be if it's carbon, uh, network solids of carbon are just like diamonds and graphite, just carbon. Silicon can have oxygen, so it's going to be a regular covalent compound. So what do I have? A? Eh, no. So not a network solid. So is it an ionic solid? All right, we know it's either B or C. Now, what does zero dipole moment mean? That means, we haven't used this term, and actually it's a good thing to talk about this. Zero dipole moment means it's nonpolar. That's another way of saying nonpolar. If it has a dipole moment, it's polar. If it has no dipole moment, it's nonpolar. So this is another way to say polar. I think in 84, that was more common to use this verbiage. Now it's more common to say polar and nonpolar. Hopefully they'll use the terminology. Does it have hydrogen bonding? E.T. phones home, didn't he? Got the O connected to the H, so let's see. Good? All right, now uh, the uh, next question, the 5,000. Which would you give off an odor when you, oh, descriptive, which one stinks? When you add it to sodium hydroxide, so plus... OH minus. And H4, of course, is correct. Because what does it give off? The OH reacts with the H to make water plus ammonia. You ever smelled ammonia? 
It's unpleasant odor cleaning kind of deal, right? A little descriptive chemistry thrown at you, right? All right, so that's the answer, of course. The $10,000 picture. If 0.06 molar F, so that's Faraday's, okay, this is an electrochem question, is passed through an electrochemical cell with a solution of indium-3 ions, the maximum number of moles in deposited at the cathode is? What does that mean, 0 0.06 Faraday's? There's 96,485 coulombs per one mole of electrons. But 0 0.06 is just 0 0.06 of this, 6% 6 of this. But it's per mole of electrons, right? There'd be three moles of electrons per one mole of indium. Why? Because it's indium-3 positive. So if we take 0 0.06 times 3, you get 18, don't you? Oh! Do you divide by 3? Uh, I have to think if I agree with him. You have 0.06 Faraday's. I'm thinking, hold on. Well, I would have rounded it. Mm -hmm. Divide by three, I guess. Okay, because it's uh, it's something to do with that. Oh well. What did I do wrong? Do you guys figure it out? Oh, you're right. Okay, I'll check your luck because I got moles. Electron, moles of electron, though, here. That would give me uh, one over moles of indium in the reciprocal. Oh, yeah. All right. Good call. Oh, here we go. Uh, this one I can do. All right. Carbon-14 to nitrogen-14 happens through what? So you got C-14-6 goes to N-14-7. What's the other product? Uh, one, zero, zero, one. zero, negative one. E. And what is that? It's called a beta particle. So on Nuke Kim, what do you got to do? They're going to have one or two questions on the exam, and there'll be uh, multiple choice. There'll be Nuke Kim. You gotta, if you know what a beta particle is, that's an easy question, isn't it? If you don't, then you better skip it. Which is the strongest Lewis acid? All right, what's a Lewis acid? What's that mean? If acids and bases are bad, that's the Bronsted Lowry definition. I always think it reverse. So an electron pair acceptor is going to be a what? An acid. So who wants electrons? Aluminum would rather have the electrons because he has a positive three charge. He wants to take three electrons to be neutral, doesn't he? Sodium is your second choice because he, of course, would like it. Chloride, not going to do it at all. He wants to give away electrons or whatever. So it's got, who wants to grab electrons? That would be the aluminum. All right. Uh, $500,000 questions. If 25 mils of Fe2 positive solution requires 14 mils of data, what is its concentration? So we have 25 they gave us a nice balanced equation. That was nice. And they gave us the permanganate was 0 0.05, and this was 14. Again, we don't have a calculator, but 14 times, oh, yuck. All right, so 14 times 0 0.05, that'd be my moles. Uh, that's my moles, right? Then you would multiply by 5 moles of Fe, 2 positive, to 1 mole of permanganate. And then you would then divide by or multiply by 1 over... Uh, 25 milliliters of the Fe. So, so it's B. They'd give you numbers, by the way, that weren't so nasty on the AP test. They'd probably make this, uh, you know, 100, and then they'd make this uh, 0.1 and 10 milliliters or something. You know, the numbers that are a lot easier to do. Or I've actually seen them. This is the answer. It's worked out like that, and then, then you know, letter B has, you know, uh, 14 times 0.05 times. Um, Actually, then they'd say over over five times twenty-five. 
That's the answer for B. And they show it like that. And you, you need to basically work the calculation out. And then, you, you know, without a calculator, they give you a, a bunch of choices that way. So that. And then uh, for the big million or five, oh, no, the million dollar question, that's the answer. Um, what is the net on equation for mixing nitrous acid and sodium hydroxide? Geez, that's too easy for a million dollar question. What's nitrous acid? HNO2. And you react it with sodium hydroxide. I dissociate this one because it's a strong acid, and I leave this together because it's a weak acid. And then, of course, you'll make water. The OH is going to get together with the H here, plus nitrite, and then the sodium cancels out. Yes, it's D. I was looking. I was looking at A, and A is not right. A is actually the correct um, answer, um, but the sodium needs to drop itself out. I mean, if you if you didn't, I know that's why it's the correct sort of regular equation, not the net ionic equation. Is this helpful, or do you want to keep going? What time have we got? Mine. About 30 minutes. We can keep going. I have no idea how many this is there. I, I looked and I looked. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Which forms a monoatomic ion with a charge of minus two? Who makes a negative two charge? Sulfur. Right? That's not bad. All right. That was an easy. 250. That's easy. 500. Here's a reaction. Oh, we got a del H. We've got a thermodynamics. How can the products be favored? You should probably make a quick note here. Most likely CuO ionic compounds, that's going to be a solid. This is going to be a solid. This is a gas. And this is a liquid. Delta H is negative. That means energy is on the product side. So what kind of a temperature do you want? Low temperature. So that makes C a possibility. Would you want to increase the pressure? If you increase the pressure, it will drive the reaction back to the left because the side with the gases is the hydrogen. This is a solid. This is a liquid, which you'd have to know. Um, it would drive it to the left. So you want actually a low T and low P. Low P is not one of my choices, so decrease the temperature. The only. Adding a catalyst does not change. It changes the rate, not how much you're going to make, right? All right. All right, hold on. Which of the following is used to etch glass? Hydrofluoric acid cannot be stored in uh, glass because it will corrode the glass. I know, hydrofluoric acid is a strange thing. It is a weak acid. That is correct. But hydrofluoric acid is one of the most dangerous chemicals you want. If you touch it, it, it is most likely uh, going to kill you. Um, it gets into your, you got to wear gloves and all that kind of stuff because it, it, it'll, it'll ruin. What it does is it reacts with the fluoride. The fluoride reacts with the calcium in your bloodstream. And uh, there's kind of a classic story that was read about this guy who had some spilled. He was doing some, he thought it was a cleaner and it spilled. And, and they took him to the hospital and they almost had to cut his arm off uh, to save his life and stuff. So there's apparently like an ER episode with hydrofluoric acid. ER is a show. I don't think it's still showing, is it? on cable at least, it's some kind of hospital show. But there's an episode with the hydrofluoric acid, which I hear is a classic, and I'd love to get just a, a little snippet of this scene, which is a story, or it's a, based upon this particular true story. Oh, molecular geometry. So what do you gotta do here? Draw a Lewis structure. Everybody takes a moment here and draw a Lewis structure of SO3. So how many electrons in S and O, and add them up, and the whole deal. This is what I got right here, but that doesn't make sulfur happy, so these two electrons get erased. You can draw it here. So, do I have an eraser tool? What is that? 
We have an eraser tool, don't we, up here? I've got pin. That inserts a blank slide. Oh, well. That one goes away. Okay. So it's trigonal planar, of course, right? Three clouds. It's got three clouds. It makes it triple. Uh, which is nearly the same atomic radii? Which chemicals have the same size? Radii means size. So who has the same sizes? All right. So you look on the periodic table. Beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen. Where are they all at? They're all in a row. So this is a row on the periodic table. All right, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. These are in a column on the periodic table, right? Carbon, phosphorus, selenium, and iodine. If you look on the periodic table, they're at a diagonal, right? And then chromium, manganese, iron, and cobalt, they are also on a row, like A. So can we eliminate anybody? B, definitely, because as you go down, they get significantly in different sizes, right? And C, diagonal, yeah, same ball game. So it's either A or D. So what are you going to go with? Yeah, D, because D, when you're in the transition metals, um, they tend to keep the same size because you're in that same D orbital, uh, the, the, the 3D orbital, I think it is, for those guys. So... Which set of quantum numbers represent one of strontium's outermost electrons? We've got strontium. Got a strontium. What symbol for strontium? SR. So we've got to find strontium on the periodic table. Strontium is what element number? Where is strontium? So it's 5, S, 2. So N will have to be equal to 5. L will have to be equal to 0, because remember, if L equals one, a 0, it's an S orbital. If it equals 1, it's a P orbital. If it's equal to 2, it's a D orbital, etc. cetera. Um, so um, it's either uh, C or D. And then ML is equal to negative L to positive L. But, of course, that's going to be 0, so C is the answer. This is not possible because you could never have an ML to be this number right here, could you? So it's... All right. Acid HA has a Ka of da-da-da. What is the percent ionization of 0.5 molar HA? Again, without a calculator, this is a bit of a pain of a question in my mind. But it's not bad. You could get this on the, on the, multiple, on the, the calculation section. HA turns into H positive plus A negative. So it's going to be uh, 0.5. 0, 0, minus x, x and x, 0.5 minus x, x and x. So you're going to have x squared over 0.5 minus x would be equal to 8 times 10 to the minus 4th. You use your solver, somebody with a solver. This one I'm not going to try in time. 8 times a half is 4 times 10. Actually, we could probably do this. If we uh, pretend that the x isn't there, do this. They call the small x assumption. A half of 8 is uh, 4, so that x squared would be equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 4th. And if we take the square root of both sides, that would be equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 2. You then divide that by 0 0.5. So that's 0 0.02 over 0 0.5. If you double that, it would be 0.4%. I think I just did that right. I think it's 4%, isn't it? I believe I'm right. Oh, you didn't circle it, but it's 4%. What is the net ionic equation? Oh, this is a good one of those uh, reaction questions. Copper 2 sulfate. So it's a solution, right? So it'd be Cu2 positive plus SO4 2 minus plus excess 6 molar ammonia plus NH3. What do you think? I've kind of given it away. You know, I'm... They're not going to ask this as a multiple choice question. They're going to make you feel the answer. It's going to make the complex, right? The Cu, NH3, 4, 2 positive, and the sulfate is expectating. So let's see. You'll need a 4 here, I guess, once you balance it. By the way, here's a, a one of those questions. Let me go back here. Um, 
What color is this ion? Blue. What's the color of this ion? It's royal blue. Very, very deep, deep blue. This is a light blue. This is a royal blue. Huh? Yeah, but it really it, it changes its shade of blue from kind of a light blue, kind of like that baby blue, to just a deep, deep royal blue. All right, for the million dollars, what is the net ionic equation for silver carbonate added to HCl? So silver carbonate will be Ag2CO3, because see, silver carbonate is a precipitate. But to that, we're going to add HCl. Now, notice I dissociated HCl because it's strong acid. Well, first of all, silver and chloride love each other. You're going to make the precipitate AgCl. But here's a rule. You've got to memorize this. If you have hydrogens ever related to finding a carbonate, they always turn into water and carbon dioxide, don't they? So um, I think that's this one, isn't it, B? Which reminds me, actually, an interesting point I saw on the news group um, the other day. There was a question about a reaction on the AP Chem test from a couple of years ago. If you see concentrated sulfuric acid, how are you going to write that? You're going to write it as H2SO4. Don't dissociate it because that's actually pure sulfuric acid. It's a thick, viscous liquid that is pure sulfuric acid. It's like 99%, but that's close enough. That's the only one you'll do that for a strong... If they say a solution of sulfuric acid, then you'll dissociate it. You'll have to kind of make a choice. Sometimes it's good to dissociate it this way. Sometimes you'll dissociate it like this. It depends on the problem. Huh? Am I wrong? Is it not B? Oh, it is A. Sorry. Yeah, this is. I saw the products here and jumped all over it, but I didn't check. Uh, yeah, it is A. All right. Yeah, it's A. All right. Back to the easy. Which element can form oxides that pollute the air and make acidic solutions? All right. What kind of oxide makes acids? Metal or non-metal oxides? Non-metal oxides. Are there any non-metals on the list? It's either A or B, isn't it? Which one is it? Have you ever heard of a fluoride, a fluoroxide, uh, OF something? No, but you've heard of sulfur ox, SO2 and so like that. All right, here's a reaction here. We got electron. It's probably a half reaction. What is the ratio of coefficients OH minus to chromate if the reaction is balanced? So you got to balance the redox reaction. Or my chromiums, if I put a 1 in here and a 1 here, then that locks that in. There's probably an easier way. But I got an O's. How many O's? I got uh, two O's on this side. I got four. I got five. But that's not going to work because then if I put a five here and I put a 1 here, then my H's don't balance, right? It's in what kind of a solution? It's in a basic solution. So I would say Cr. O2 minus, I would just start over, make CrO4 2 minus, and then we would add uh, two waters, right, on this side, and then we would add four hydrogens, and then we would add four hydroxides to both sides, and this becomes uh, two waters, right, because the four waters cancel out these two waters. And do they want the electrons? No, this is the OH minus the CrO2. The OH minus would be 4 to uh, the CrO2 to 1. So it's D. So it's just balancing a redox half reaction. All right, what about this one? Okay, here's the rate law. What is the order of the reaction with respect to I negative? Don't get confused. The temptation is to jump with three because it's one, a one, and a one, and you add it up. It is third order overall, but it is first order with respect to the iodide. So watch that. That's a little bit tricky, isn't it? All right. 
What happens to the electrochemical cell if the salt bridge is placed by a platinum wire? Oh, you know, I'm not sure we've talked about this. So if you've got, you know, you got your salt bridge, you got two containers, and you usually have a little bridge that, you know, and then you got your electrodes, and then this goes up to like a voltmeter. Is it going to work? What travels through a salt bridge? Ions. Can ions travel through a wire? What travels through a wire? Electrons. So what's going to happen to our voltage? It's going to die. You've just destroyed your battery or your galvanic electrochemical cell. Which has the shortest bond? What type of bonds are shorter? Double and triple bonds. That's correct. You're looking for a triple bond or a double bond. All right. Remember, there's a rule. We made a rule. The simple rule of, of, of uh, the, uh, organic chemistry. Who likes to have one bond? Look at the periodic table. I was on the periodic table. Who wants a, uh, one bond? Hydrogen and who else? And all the halogens. So iodine and bromine want one bond. What do we say about oxygen? How many bonds does he want? What do we say about nitrogen? How many does he want? The quick and dirty way to do, uh, we could draw and add up electrons and draw every single one of these Lewis structures, but that would take a lot of time, wouldn't it? So, of course, the shortest bond is the triple bond, so it is, of course, nitrogen. All right, which is paramagnetic? What are you going to do with this question? You're skipping it. I, um, I don't know. I have to sit and think about that one. You, that, that is important to note, is that at some point, since we did not cover that, you see paramagnetism, diamond, you're skipping that question. Which can be an oxidizing agent? Now, what does that mean? It likes to reduce. Oh, can't. Oh, okay. So can't, thank you, that's important. Can't reduce. So it can't reduce. Reduce means going down in charge. Can he go down in charge? He can go to MN2 positive. I negative, that's negative 1. Can he go down in charge? Down in charge would be like negative 2 or negative 3. You ever heard of that going down in charge? No. S can go down to S negative 2. And dichromate can go to CR3 positive. That's down, so it's B. Yeah. Um, next question. 9 grams of aluminum is added to HCl at... SDB. How much hydrogen gas is produced? All right, they've given you a hint here. What's the reaction? Al plus HCl makes what? Hydrogen gas plus AlCl3. All right. So I'm going to have to put a, I think I need to put a two here. So I need six of these. So I can get three of these and one of these. If I've got nine grams of this, how many? A two. Thank you. I got a three here. That's right. If I got nine grams, it would be nine grams of Al over one, 27 grams Al, one mole Al, right? And then you'll say three moles H2 to two moles Al. And then you'll say 22.4 liters in one mole. Nine and uh, nine times is 27. One, it's 22.4, isn't it? Divided by two is. I'm trying to do this in my head. Yeah, because nine times three is 27. 27 by 27 is one divided by two, so it's 11.2. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the million dollar, we'll stop with this one. All right, here's a reaction. How can we make more HGI42 minus? I've seen this one. This is an equilibrium, so what do you want to do? You want to drive the reaction to the, drive it to the right. So if I want to drive it to the right, what chemical will drive it to the right? Increase the hydroxide ion concentration. What would happen if you added more of this? 
That would shift to the left. That would not be that would be counterproductive. What if you raise the temperature? So delta H is less than zero, which means it's exothermic, so energy's on this side. If you increase the temperature, that's gonna shift to the left. If you add a catalyst, no effect. It's adding the nitric acid. Why is B the correct answer? Because it's gonna pull the hydroxide away, plus H positive makes water, and if you pull something away, it shifts to that side, in this case to the right.